Uh, I'm uh, Tim Jellison, W3YQ, also KL7WV. We've decided to uh, try to do a video trying to keep you safe when you're climbing ham radio towers. I've been uh, licensed since I was 13 years old, which is obviously a long time now, and I've been climbing all that time. Uh, when I was a kid, like many of us, we were the young kid who showed up at field day and the old timer says, hey kid, take this dipole up on top of that tower and tie it off. You go scurrying up there with no climbing safety equipment, no training, no nothing. You're young, you're invincible. You go up, put your arm around the tower, antenna in your teeth, tie it off, come down, you're the hero, go in and work a bunch of guys on 20 CW. We don't do that anymore. We're not invincible. We never were. It's amazing that uh, guys like me didn't get killed all these all these years of doing stupid stuff. With age comes a little bit of wisdom, I guess. It's my personality that if I'm going to do something, I want to do it correctly and safely. So in 2012, I went to uh, Calm Train and became certified as a uh, tower climber and high angle rescue person. So I am a, a fully qualified tower climber and I'm also able to rescue an injured climber who's up on the tower. The reason, there's a couple reasons we're doing this video. One is that over the years and perhaps more so recently, we've had some uh, fellows get killed doing this. Guys like to be loud, and to be loud, a lot of times you have to have a tower. A lot of times you're climbing the tower. Most of the time you don't have the right equipment, you don't have the proper training, and you're probably doing it in a dangerous manner. I see guys climbing in a dangerous manner all the time. It scares me. It upsets me. I don't want to see anybody get hurt or killed because they love this hobby as much as I do. So I'm um, hoping that you take some of this to heart. A lot of what I'm going to tell you and, and what I do has uh, not been taught to me in a, any professional manner. It's a lot of it's common sense. It's things I've picked up over the years. And I really do try to do things in a, in a very safe manner. Now, if you're going to climb, you got to have the right equipment and you have to be physically capable of doing it. If you're out of shape, probably don't want to do it. If you are afraid of heights, everybody's afraid of heights. I've Actually, I've climbed with a few fellows that weren't afraid of heights. I didn't like climbing with them. I like them being afraid of heights. I'm afraid of heights, but in a proper manner, it just keeps me safe. You do need to have the proper mindset to do this. You respect the dangers. It doesn't mean you shouldn't do it, but you do have to be careful when you're doing it. If you get in trouble up on top of a tower, you have to hope that somebody can get you down. A lot of times that falls onto the uh, shoulders of your local fire department. Some of us are fortunate enough to live in an area where you have professional trained fire department personnel who have the uh, equipment and the training to get you down. Sometimes it falls on a volunteer fire department. They may not have the equipment or the training or somebody who's willing to come up and get you. So if you're above the height of their equipment or they can't get their equipment in there to get the bucket truck, to, truck up there to get you down, it's a real problem. Don't get into that situation. Don't put anybody in the, in the uh, position where they have to come and get you because you're up there disabled. The way you do that is to try to be in shape, work smart, and uh, of course don't fall off the tower and also don't have the tower fall over with you on it. So we are talking also about how to do a general inspection of towers. Um, so I, I would like to show you the equipment that I use. If you go on the internet, you'll find out there's all kinds of safety equipment out there. And there's a reason for that because I, I know this may be viewed internationally. I don't know what the rules are all over the world, but I do have a pretty good understanding of what OSHA, the United States Occupational Safety Health Administration, requires 
If you're an employee, you have to follow OSHA rules about fall arrest. And the equipment I'm going to show you is compliant with those rules because you also have this other organization called ANSI, the American National Standards Institute. OSHA says you have to have fall arrest. ANSI says here's the equipment you have to have to satisfy that requirement. So everything I'm going to show you here in just a second is compliant. I try to do everything legally, safely, properly. Um, and then I'm going to show you some things that I do that uh, may make it even a little safer for you.